Masters.
Yes. service thus far. We praise and thank the Lord for the songs of Zion that have gone up to refresh our souls. But this time, we're going to ask you to stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. We're going to present to you our preacher for the morning in the person of Elder David Hollis. Let's say, preach the word. The Lord is gracious, and we're thankful to him for another day and another week. It's a week you've never seen before. You've seen October. Some of you have seen 52 Octobers. Some of you have seen 11 Octobers. Some of you have seen 68, 69 Octobers. Some of you have seen 83 Octobers. Some of you have only seen 12 Octobers, but you've never seen this October before. And so we learn to give God thanks for what he's done today. We praise him for today. There are some people who say, oh, I don't make a big deal about birthdays. I've learned to thank God for each one. Because when they stop, they don't start over. You learn to appreciate, and you may be seated, the goodness of God and the mercy of God. I was listening to the choir sing, He's My Everything. I've heard people use that phrase about spouses. I've heard people use that phrase about people they were in love with. Oh, he's my everything. Oh, she's my everything. And then when they end up in divorce court, <laughs> what happened to everything? I was t telling a friend of mine, at one point I had stopped going to weddings, not because I was not celebrating the institution that God ordained. But I got tired of hearing people lie. <laughs> for better, for worse, you lying. Rich or poor, you lying. Forsaking all others, keeping thee only to thyself. You lying. I start buying wedding gifts and holding on to my receipt. If y'all don't last, I want my res I want my gift back. I want my 
want the gift back and the money in the card. I want it back. Because this was to celebrate your union, not your departure. And especially the amount of divorces that end up in no contest. We just don't get along. But that was in the contract. Nowhere in the contract did it say if she could cook. <laughs> Nowhere in the contract it said if he was lazy. You should have talked to his mama. You could have found out. He been lazy since nine years old. And mama might have been the cause of it. But when we say God is our everything, That's a mature statement. You can live with your parents and assume that you're running things. You can live with your parents and start calling stuff mine. My room. My house. My clothes. And you don't realize what the cost is. It's not till you get grown and you get out and you learn to look back and tell mom and daddy, thank you. I didn't realize how much clothes cost. I just said I need some new shoes. I didn't realize how much milk cost. I just opened up the refrigerator and didn't see any, and I said, hey, Dad, ain't no more milk. It was like magic. You open the refrigerator, ain't no milk. You close the refrigerator, you go to school, you come back, open up the refrigerator, <laughs> milk is in the refrigerator. You had no idea what it cost to put that milk in the refrigerator. You had no, you don't understand how many hours have to be worked just to accumulate enough money for rent. You just say, I got to go here, we got this practice, we got that practice, we got to be here, we got to be there. Coach Brown said I need to be here. I didn't understand that gas runs out. And that you have to go to the tank and refuel and it costs. I enjoyed my father going to the gas station. It was fun. It was fun. Back then, you got a choice of regular or unleaded. Back then, you had a choice, full service or self-service. I wanted daddy to go to self-service so I could pump. I wanted to pump and I just wanted to keep pumping. Daddy said, hey boy, stop that pump at $20. And back then, $20 was a big deal. You could get a whole tank of gas for less than $20. If you did 20, you were, you were big time. That means you had, my daddy had a, a Cadillac Fleetwood. We called it a bro ham. Not a brome, bro ham. I didn't realize that the cost of that gas 
was coming out of my father's pocket. And when I think about it, back then, minimum wage was 318. And they were running a whole house. A whole house. Cabinets full. Deep freezing. That's what we called it. We called it the deep freezer. The deep freezer was full. We had meat in the freezer, vegetables in the freezer. Mama made homemade ice cream. It was in the free, whatever you need. Then we had a pantry. Mama took us to the field. We picked green beans, strawberries. We picked, uh, uh, it was, uh, well, we did collard greens. But see, collard greens, the good thing about collard greens, they grew all year. So they will grow even in the wintertime. You can get greens, you can go cut greens out in the wintertime. No such thing as you ain't got nothing to eat. Greens grow in the winter. Look at y'all. Some of y'all look like, for real? You so city. You don't know no better. We did those things. Mama would take us to the field. I got one of my worst beatings. And I mean it just like that. In a strawberry field. My mother took us strawberry picking. They'd give you a big bucket. And you could go. You had to. You started at the front of the farm. But they, the buses took you out to the field. You got off the bus with your bucket. You got in your row. And you just went all the way down your row. And picked strawberries off the bush. But I was picking strawberries off the bush. My cousin was in the row next to me. And while we were picking strawberries, and you would, we would pick strawberries, you pick some, put them in the bucket, then you eat some, put them in the bucket, eat some. And my cousin, from his row next to me, <laughs> hit me in the head with a strawberry. I grabbed a big strawberry, big one. I turned and threw it at him and he ducked. And it hit the white lady in the next field. And all she said was, whoo! And my mother sat up and the little lady said, you boys, be careful. My mother said, ma'am. I said, oh, world is over. She said, ma'am, what happened? The lady said, oh, no, boys will be boys. My mother came out that row and came to our row. And she was coming down my row talking through her teeth. Get over here right now. She said, what did you do? can't say nothing because now you're lying but you don't want to confess what you did because then you'll be dead and I said ma'am she said I'm going to ask you one more time what did you do I said ma'am she said mm -hmm, that's my answer that lady grabbed me She popped me, and we were 13, so we weren't little boys. We had sized up. My mother said, <laughs> And then she told my cousin, step over the strawberries. He had to step out of his aisle, and by this time, my aunt, his mother, had come down our row too. They were having a caucus in the strawberry patch. 
My aunt said, what did they do? My mama said, they didn't hit the white lady with the strawberry. My aunt said, bam! <laughs> we crying. I mean, they hit us hard. I don't mean tap. My mother said, oh, y'all going to come out here and show out. Y'all going to embarrass me. Mama said, now get over there and tell that lady you sorry. And I hesitated. Y'all know how that went. Didn't go so well. I went over there and I said, Ma'am, I'm sorry for hitting you with the strawberry. She said, oh, that's okay. And I'm thinking, no, it ain't because you got me in trouble. <laughs> A couple of days ago, I happened to be driving past that strawberry field. And I said, I wonder where that white lady is. <laughs> We didn't realize what it took to run a household. But now that I've matured, I've learned to tell my mother and father, thank you for everything. Thank you for everything. I said all that to say, that when you mature with God, you learn how to look back and say, he's my everything. <laughs> he was there when I had, he was there when I didn't have. He was there when I was healthy, he was there when I got sick. He was there when I felt comforted and he was there when I felt like I was all alone. He was there when I thought I had friends, and he was there when I recognized my enemies. He's my everything. So when you see us sing songs, we're not singing songs without a backstory. We got history with God. When you see us dancing, it ain't just because it's the churchy thing to do. My body's expressing what my soul is feeling. Oh, Shama. He's my everything. You have trusted in stuff that has failed you. The one I trust, he has never failed me. Never. 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 Even when things didn't go the way I thought it should have gone. He was there. He didn't abandon me. He comforted me even when things went opposite of the way I wanted it to go. There are people I prayed for and I wanted him to heal them. And he didn't. But he didn't abandon me. He gave me answers. He gave me comfort. And he gave me strength. When I thought I couldn't get past that day, he strengthened me to live beyond that day. He's my everything. I look at people who think they're real intelligent. Don't you realize you just one step from a stroke? Do you realize as gifted as you think your brain is, you just one step from Parkinson's. You just one, one step. The psalmist said it was one step between me and death. Just one. Just one. All the near misses you've had in life, 
You almost had an accident. You almost fell off the ladder. You almost, almost, almost. Some of y'all sitting here almost got shot. Almost, almost. Al almost, almost driving while drunk. Almost went off the cliff. Almost. You just one step. Don't you come in here and stick your little bird chest out. You better give credit to the Lord. He's my everything. So when you see us worshiping, we're not crazy. We're not foolish. We have degrees. We work corporate jobs. Sometimes people see the church folks shouting. They say, oh, they, they just crazy. They don't know no better. We got good sense. I got enough sense to know where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. And some people will brag and say, well, you know, the reason you all pray so much is because, you know, you don't have certain connections and you don't know certain people. Trust me. Trust me. Your little lying friends, the little connections you got, because you had to scratch somebody else's back so they could scratch yours. All the little lies you done told to get what you got. All the underhanded deals. You going to call that a miracle? You just setting up to pay the piper. The God I serve. When he works, I get to testify publicly on how he did it. And I don't owe anybody. Some of y'all still paying on favors. Some of y'all still bragging on your lying brothers. Some of you still think it was your sorrows that got you in. Come on, you divine nine. Come on. The only altar I have to kneel at is the almighty God. <laughs> now, I know that last statement just messed some of y'all up. Y'all say, oh, I was with you till you mess with my sorrow. I was with you. Trust me. I'm amazed that people go more to Greek fraternity meetings than they do to church. I'm amazed. I'm amazed that you call yourself by a, a Greek mythological being than to refer to yourself as a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is not a figment of your imagination. Jesus is not. He is not some being out there. I will agree with you that Jesus is not blue-eyed and blonde hair. I will agree with you. No, he is not. I will agree with you on that. Jesus is real. He is the Lord from glory. Hallelujah. And I am thankful that all of you, don't worry, I'm already preaching. I want to thank you for your hospitality this weekend. It has been amazing. I appreciate it. Your hospitality, it has been amazing. Pastor Price, thank you. Thank you for your consistency. Thank you to God for all those that play roles in accomplishing the will of God for this church. Um, um, I recognize that it takes a body. Everybody can't be the eye. The Bible says if everybody was the eye, where would be the hearing? If everybody was the ear, where would be the smelling? We all have roles to play. And believe it or not, our most vital organs don't get seen. The hands, everybody sees the hands. But let the heart stop working.
everybody sees the face. What if the lungs say, I'm tired of being inside. I want to be outside. I want people to see me. What if your pancreas or your liver or your kidneys decide, you know what? Y'all don't ever talk about us, so I'm done. I'm out of here. Deuces. It affects the whole body. So I want to salute everybody who works as a member of the body of Christ and particularly members of Burris Temple. I want to salute you. I want to thank you. I want to appreciate those who you're training. Um, I remember there is no nurse like Mother Pearl. None. 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 She didn't ask you. She told you. I remember the first time I came here and I had my little stuff. And she said, all right, give it to me. And I said, oh, no, ma'am. And I, you know, I'm considering her frame and, you know, she's little. And I, I said, no, ma'am. She said, I said, give it to me. <laughs> and that started our relationship. Yes, ma'am. And to still see her in the house of the Lord, it is a blessing. It is a blessing to see you. Um, but I'm looking at the new nurse. What's your name? What's your name? Samia. When I came down the stairs today, uh, Sister Me said, and Sister, Sister Samia is our new nurse in training, and she's helping us. I love to see how you're raising up a new generation. Y'all can't see it. She's just as red as her, her, her nurse's badge. She didn't turn red as a stop sign. I asked her her name. She forgot her name. She said, huh? <laughs> it's all right. But I, I want to salute. I looked, and this weekend I saw, I don't know her name, the sister that was on the drums. Sister Jessica on the drums. Well, I remember when my brother with the bow tie was on the drums for years. Oh, that's her father. Come on, next generation. Yes. And I want to salute all of you all that serve. Those of you who have served for years, and now your bodies. There's a point where your mind and your body work together. And then there comes a fork in the road where your mind goes one way and your body goes another. And if you're not careful, you got to know when to listen to each one. Because you'll get to that fork in the road and your mind will say, you can jump off of here. And your body say, you better not try that. Your mind will tell you, you can wear them heels. And your body say, you better go back to them kittens. <laughs> your body will tell you, you still got it. Just put on a belt. Your mind say, you got it. All you got to do is put on a belt. Your body say, you better put them suspenders on. <laughs> Uphold everything you got. I am thankful to the Lord to see the deacons in the house of God. And I want to give God thanks for all those that are supporting those who are getting older. Thank you. When you're taking care of somebody, it is not easy. Because two things can happen. 
Neglect can happen on either side because you're trying to take care of yourself and them. So something might fall through the cracks. Sometimes you get so devoted to taking care of them that you do forget about you. And so it is a balancing act. And I pray that God, all of you that are taking care of someone, that God gives you grace to take care of them. He gives you grace. Also, I'm praying for all those that are being taken care of. That the Lord give you grace. Because some of us are very independent. And it takes a lot. We have to come to a place that it takes a lot to let somebody do something for us. It makes us feel weak. It makes us feel like we're, we're, we're not um, as strong as we used to be. And we know it, but we don't like telling everybody else. And then when, when you get to the place that somebody else has to wash you, it takes a level of dignity on both sides. Understand, those of you that are taking care of people, understand, I know they give you resistance, but understand, we're still trying to hold on to some level of dignity. It takes a lot. So don't, 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 don't become vicious, you know, you know, um, we, we learn to help each other because you're the strong one today, but we don't know what's going to happen to you next year and you're going to need somebody, you're going to need somebody and so I'm talking to the young people. When you see elderly people, we call them the old folk. Now, old folk is relative. Because when I was 13, I thought 50 was old folk. Now that I'm 53, 70 don't look bad at all. grandfather when he turned 90 I was taking him to all of his doctor's appointments and he and I were just talking one day and he said yeah you know the old folks say and I burst out laughing <laughs> and he looked at me he said boy what you laughing at I said granddaddy you the old people <laughs> he said uh uh he said I can still remember my mother and my grandparents he said they the old folk. I said, Graham, your, your father died at 93. I said, and Grandoc been dead for 30 years. He, I said, yeah, they the old folk. I said, but you 94. He said, uh-huh. He said, but I'm still their child. <laughs> and so I want to salute Burris Temple for being a multi-generational church. And I pray, I pray that the Lord will continue to strengthen all of us. All right. Let's go. I'm going to get you out before the game starts. Let's go. St. John chapter 20 and St. John chapter 7. St. John chapter 20 verse 21. Elder, is it Shockley? Did I get it? Elder Shockley, God bless you. I talk about you often um, when I talk to musicians I, I mention you 
by actions even when I can't remember your name. I said, there's a man in Ohio that enjoys ministry on the organ, but he also enjoys worshiping the Lord. And he'll jump off the organ to dance. But what always fascinates me is when he jumps back on the organ, he right on beat. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. St. John chapter 20, verse 21 and 22. St. John chapter 20, verse 21 and 22. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. St. John chapter 7, verse 38 and 39. St. John chapter 7, verse 38 and 39. King James Version reads like this. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. The Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Verse 38. He that believeth on me as the scriptures hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Lord, speak to us this morning. Confirm this word in the eyes of those that see it. And those that hear this word, let them believe it and receive the Holy Ghost. I trust you to do it. Anoint me afresh. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. For a few moments out of the word of the Lord this morning, I'd like to minister to you from this subject. The time is now. The time is now. The word of the Lord is ministered this morning out of a book known to us as the book of John. Well, to see who the John we're talking about, we've got to deduce which ones we're not talking about. The Bible teaches us, particularly in the New Testament, there are at least five men named John in the New Testament. Remember, there is John the Baptist. He is the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth. And then there's John Mark. John Mark is the cousin of Barnabas. Then there is Jonas. Now when you hear the name Jonas, Jonas is a derivative from the name John. The Bible says that Jonas was the father of Simon, Peter, and Andrew. Jonas. And then there is John who is the kinsman of the high priest uh, called uh, uh, Annas. Acts chapter 4 gives you that information. So we're not talking about John the Baptist. We're not talking about John Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. We're not talking about Jonas, the father of Andrew and Simon Peter. And neither are we talking about John, the kinsman of the high priest Annas. Then what John are we are what John are we talking about? We're talking about the John who is the son of Zebedee. The Bible says he's got a brother named James. It is this John. The name John is fascinating to me. It means uh, Yahweh has been gracious. That God is gracious. The Scripture teaches us that. John, everybody named John, their name means 
God is gracious or the grace of God. Uh, 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 it's hard. Uh, how, how your name going to be God is gracious and you mean? Mm. Uh, the next time you meet a mean John, tell him, do you know your name means gracious? It is this John, John the son of Zebedee, the brother of James. When you look at this book, you'll see that this guy, John, he is chosen by the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord chose 12. But even in choosing them, he did not just randomly say, ah, oh, maybe you, maybe you, maybe you, maybe you. Jesus the Christ specifies and says in one of his prayers, Father, all that you have given me, <laughs> I've lost none. Church, uh, Jesus picked people that he was given. Meaning that Jesus knows your future better than you do. I know. Um, you tried to align your future. Some of y'all said you wanted to be married by 22 and have a child by 25. And some of you said you want to live in this city and live on this side of the country or you want to live out of the country. But the Lord knows your future better than you do. Matter of fact, the Bible says this about God, that he declares the end of a thing from the beginning. We have to wait to the end of a thing to declare how it got from the beginning to the end. But God declares the end of a thing from the beginning. God can say to a newborn baby what day, what month, and what year that baby will die. God can speak and say to a newborn or better yet an unborn child. God can say what day that child will be born, what day that child will get married, what day that child will have children. God can declare it. He declares the end of a thing. He stands at the finish line and he can declare who's going to win the race even before the race starts. Why? <laughs> because he is beginning and end. <laughs> oh, church, the works of God are already done. Well, <laughs> John writes, and when you look at John's writings in talking about God, he says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. John writes and says, in the beginning, rather, that's Genesis. John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. <laughs> John takes the time, and if you read John's writings, John gives good information. But his information is literally simple. <laughs> John uses simplicity to talk about things of God. John, uh, the Encyclopedia of the Bible says that John's book is known for its simple diction, yet its profound thought. John uses simple words, but they have such depth in their meaning. John uses words like the word, 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 a four-letter word, word, word. <laughs> oh, but his thought about that word is so deep. John uses the word world, world, world. In one of his writings, he says, God so loved the world. Then he turns right around and says, love not the world. He says, he writes to us and says, if you are a friend of the world, you are an enemy of God. John uses words like light. God is light. John says his word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. John writes and says walk in the light as he's in the light. John uses the word life, life, life. He says God is life. 
<laughs> in him was the light of men. Church, <laughs> John writes and uses the word know, K-N-O-W, know, to know. <laughs> ah, he says, know these things. Happy are you if you know these things and do them. John writes, he uses the word love, love, love. God is love. He uses the word hate, he uses the word truth, he uses the word glory. But there seems to be one word that John keeps driving home as a hammer hitting a nail in a piece of wood. John keeps writing and more than any other word, he uses the word believe. John says, if thou canst believe. Believest thou this? Ah, ah, these things shall follow them that believe. Ah, if you can believe on him as the scriptures have said. When you read the entire book of St. John, if nothing else, you should walk away believing. Ah, this book should make you a believer. Well, ha, John writes, and when you look at John, you say, who is he? Ha, what authority does he have to write? Well, ha, when Paul the Apostle writes to the church in Galatians chapter 2, he calls John a pillar in the early church. Ha, so John's not a novice. John is not a neophyte. John is not somebody new. Ha, he ain't some Johnny come lately. John's been around a while. Matter of fact, John saw some things that other people didn't see. John says, I was there. I was there when he took a dead girl by the hand and spoke in his native tongue and said, Talitha kumi, damsel arise. He said, I saw the dead girl sit up. And just to prove that it was not rigor mortis, Jesus said, give her something to eat. Ha, let her eat, she is alive, give her fish. Ha, the Bible says, John says, I was there in the mountain. John says, I saw him transfigure. Ha, oh, I like that the scripture didn't use the word disfigure. Ha, the Bible didn't say he was disfigured. The Bible says he was transfigured. Ha, oh, shama. Ha, oh, he went from one position to another. Ha, John said, I saw his face start shining like the sun. John says, I saw his garment become glistering white. John says, I heard the voice from heaven say, this is my beloved son, not with whom, but in whom I'm well pleased. Hallelujah. John says, I was there. John says, ha, other people tell you about it, but I'm not writing ha, from the point of view through third eyes. I'm not telling you what somebody else said. This isn't secondhand information. I'm telling you what I saw with my own eyes. Ha, John said, we beheld his glory. Ha, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John says, we handled him. Ha, John says, I sat right next to him. Ha, the Bible says when they sat down with Jesus, the disciples, ha, John always sat right next to Jesus. Ha, John says, I even leaned on him. Ha, when we were sitting, ha, oh, they didn't sit like in tables like we have. Uh, they sat in a style that what we would consider family style uh, and they ate with what we call family style eating out of the same pots and bowls. Uh, that's why Jesus said, he that dippeth with me in the sop. Uh, oh, church, uh, talking about Judas, John said, I was there. John says, this is not somebody that I've got supposition about. This is not somebody uh, that I'm writing about based on a hypothetical situation. He says, I know him. John writes and says that it is this Jesus. This Jesus, he's the Lord from glory. John says, I can tell you who he is because I heard him say, I am. John says in chapter 4, verse 26, Jesus said, I am he. 
John says in chapter 5, verse 43, I am come in my Father's name. John said, Jesus said in 648, I am the bread of life. Jesus says in chapter 6, verse 51, I am the living bread. Chapter 7, verse 29, I am from him. Chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. Chapter 8, verse 23, I am from above. Ha. Chapter 8, verse 58, before Abraham was, I am. Ha. Chapter 10, verse 9, I am the door. Ha. Chapter 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. Ha. Chapter 11, verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. Ha. Chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Chapter 14, verse 11, I am in the Father, and the Father's in me. Chapter 15, verse 1, I am the true vine. Church, John says, if you ever want to know who Jesus is, ask me. I can tell you because I heard him say, I am. Well, it is this John. This John writes to us and begins to share with us information concerning Jesus the Christ. John says, I saw him get crucified. John says, I saw him breathe his last breath. John says, when everybody else forsook him and ran away, John said, I stayed at the base of the cross. I saw his blood run down the cross and create a puddle on the ground. John said, I stood there with Mary, his mother. John said, I heard him say, I thirst. John said, I heard him say, Ah, oh, man, behold your mother. John said, he was talking to me. John said when Jesus was dying, he put the care of his mother in my hands. John said he looked at his mama and said, woman, behold thy son. Oh, I was adopted into their family. And I was responsible of taking care of Mary until she died. John says, oh, people got mad at me because Jesus looked at me and said that I wouldn't taste death until I saw the Son of Man coming in glory and power. John said, people got mad at me and they start putting the rumor out that I was not going to ever die. Jesus never said that I wasn't going to die. He just said I wouldn't taste death until I saw him coming in the clouds with glory and power. John said, John said they tried to kill me. History says they tried to throw me in a pot of hot oil, but I didn't burn up because there was a word of God over my life. Church, when you live by the word of God, no weapon that's formed against you shall be able to prosper. Well, it is this John. This John says, I was there. I've seen every disciple die. He said, I saw James die. He said, I saw Peter die. Bartholomew died. He said, Nathaniel died. Oh, he said, Judas died. He took his own life. John said, I'm the last one standing. John said, they even banished me. John said, they thought they'd get rid of me and put me on an island by myself. Put me on that isle called Patmos. They thought that they were banishing, getting rid of me. They had no idea that's where God wanted me. Because while I was on the aisle called Patmos, he said, I got caught up. He said, I saw visions. 
that are unlawful for me to utter. He said, I saw some things. He said, I don't know. Oh, in the body, out of the body, I don't know. He said, I don't know if I got caught up in my physical man or just my spirit got caught up. He said, but one thing I do know, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. John said, and I saw some stuff. I heard him call my name and his voice sounded like the voice of many waters. He said, when I turned around to see him, his glory was so powerful, I dropped like a dead man. John said he had to put his hands on me and said, John, it is I. John said he told me to write and put this stuff in a book. He said, so I wrote to the seven churches. I wrote and I concluded these are not my words, but the amen has spoken it. Church, he said, I warned people, don't add to the words of this book. He said, if you add to the words of this book, the plagues that's in this book going to be added to you. He said, I had to warn people, don't take away from the book. Ha. Don't start deleting ha, stuff I wrote in the book. Ha. He said, because if you take stuff out of this book, ha, your name will be taken out of the Lamb's book of life. Ha. John said, I'm not writing ha, as a ghost writer. Ha. He said, I'm telling you what I saw with my own eyes. Ha. Now that we know ha, the authority of the writer is true. Ha. John writes and John says ha, that when they buried him, ha, the scripture says they took him off the cross, John said. I was there. I saw them take the nails out of his hand. Who showed up? The Bible says two guys showed up. The scripture says one guy was named Joseph. He was called Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible says he went and pleaded for the body of the Lord. He went to take the body down off the cross. But the Bible says while Joseph was trying to take the body down off the cross, another guy named Nico, Nicodemus. I know you only know Nicodemus in chapter 3 because he came to the Lord by night. Oh, church. But Nicodemus made a public display of his love for Jesus. The Bible says Nicodemus shows up. Now I know some of y'all can't say amen. You sitting there like for real? That means you ain't read that far. Oh, the Bible says Nicodemus shows up and takes helps Joseph take the body off of the cross. Look at it. They've got to pry the nail, the spike out of his hand. The limp hand, the same hand that laid hands on the sick is now a limp hand. They've got to pry the nails out of his feet. The same feet that walked on water. Now there's no life seemingly in his feet. Look at his side. He's got a big gaping hole. You could see all the way to what when we were kids, we called it the white meat. You could see all the way to the white meat. You could see past his flesh, his brown skin. And you could see the insides hanging out. Oh, he looks depleted because all of his blood has been drained. Church, the Bible says he shed his blood. But the Bible says life is in the blood. So when the scripture says he shed his blood, what the Bible was really saying, he shed his life. Because life is in the blood. He shed his life for you and me. John said we took him off the cross. We washed his body. We wrapped him up in linen. And we put him in the tomb. John said while he was there. We all hid. We hid in a room with the doors locked because we were afraid. John said. John said and one of our friends called Mary. Mary 
he said, I got to go. We didn't get a chance. Ha! We didn't get a chance to put spices around his body. Remember, ha! the Jewish custom is that they don't embalm. Ha! That's why when a Jewish person dies, ha! they don't wait till grandma from Mississippi come up. Ha! They don't wait. Ha! They ain't holding the body for 14 days. Ha! No, ha! they believe ha! you got three days to bury the body. Ha! They go bury that body. Ha! Even the Muslim practice. Ha! They go wash the body and do within three days you bury the body. Ha! Anybody don't make it to the funeral? Ha! Oh, you just have to get a placard. Ha! You get a card ha! to remember them. Ha! Oh, church, the Bible says they buried him. Ha! Mary says, ha, oh, he ain't embalmed, but we got to put spices ha, so that the body don't smell and don't stink. Ha. The scripture says early before the dawning of the day. Ha. Oh, I know some people have sunrise services, ha, but Jesus got up before sunrise. Ha. The Bible says he got up before the dawning of the day. Ha. Mary goes to the tomb, and the scripture says when she gets there, ha, she sees that the door, ha, or what we call the stone, has been rolled away ha, from the tomb. Ha. The Bible says she goes, and she says, ha, oh, they didn't stole the body. She said they couldn't let him lie in dignity. Ha, they were out to embarrass Jesus. Remember when they put him on a cross? Ha, oh, Michelangelo put that little ha, that little white skirt almost on him. Ha, oh, they that wasn't on him. Ha, he hung on the cross naked. Ha, they were not trying ha, to maintain his dignity. Ha, they were trying to embarrass embarrass and shame him. Ha, church, ha, Mary said they couldn't enough that they had to ha, humiliate him on a cross. Ha, they had to crucify him like he was a murderer ha, when he did no wrong. Ha, Mary said, I wonder ha, where are all the people that he healed? Ha, how come nobody showed up to speak on his behalf? Ha, how come when he went to court? Ha, where is Jarius? How come Jarius didn't say Ha, he healed my daughter. Ha, oh, where is the woman with the issue of blood? Ha, how come she didn't say, ha, I had run out of money trying to get healed. Ha, but when I touched the hem of his garment, ha, I got made whole. Ha, where are the 5,000 people ha, that Jesus fed with two fishes ha, and five loaves of bread? Ha, how come nobody showed up to the trial ha, to speak about his character? Ha, Mary said, and now they've embarrassed him some more. Ha, they want to take his body ha, ha, out of the grave. Ha, the Bible says Mary. Ha, Mary is told. Ha. Oh, ha. oh, why do you seek the living amongst the dead? Ha. Mary said, what y'all done done with the Lord? Ha. Oh, Mary asked the proverbial question ha, that we all ask every time somebody die. Ha. Who got the body? Ha. Oh, church, ha. Oh, in every neighborhood, ha. you know ha. there's a good mortician ha. and there's a bad. Ha. Oh, some of y'all done already told your family, ha. when I die, ha. don't take me over there. Ha. Oh, ha. take me across town. Ha. Mary say who got the body? Ha. The Bible says ha. the scripture says that Mary ha, runs back and Mary runs and starts beating on the door. Ha. She goes to John's house and she's beating on the door. She goes to Peter's house rather. Ha. She's beating on the door. She say y'all they didn't got the body. Ha. They didn't got Jesus. The Bible says two disciples take out one of them. Ha. Who runs? Ha. The Bible says John runs. Ha. And then Peter runs. Ha. The Bible says John gets to the tomb first. Ha. But John won't go in. Ha. Peter. Ha. Peter said what? Ha. What they going to do to me? What? Ha. John Peter said I didn't already cut one of them. Ha. If I need to, I'll cut somebody else. Ha. The Bible says Peter goes down into the tomb. 
Ah. And Peter gets in the tomb and he sees no Jesus. Ha! Peter comes out with a hung head, ha! his chin in his chest, ha! tears in his eyes. Ha! Peter walks away. John steps in. Ha! John says, when I went in, ha! I saw all the linen that we wrapped him in. Ha! I saw the linen on the side. Ha! And then I saw the napkin that we covered his face, ha! neatly folded in the corner. Ha! John said, but I saw no Jesus. Ha! The scripture says they start walking back. Ha! Mary still standing at the tomb crying. Ha! John Mary said, well, if they could go in, ha! I guess i go in. Ha! Mary says, but when I stepped in, ha! Mary said, I saw two angels. Ha! One standing at the head ha! and one standing at the foot where Jesus would have been. Ha! Church, ha! Mary said, ha! that the angel said he is risen. Ha! He is not here. Ha! Oh, church. Ha! Mary said she came out. Ha! Mary said she was walking back to the house. Ha! Mary said she saw this guy. Ha, that looked like the gardener. Ha, she thought she, he worked for the cemetery. Ha, she said, excuse me, sir. Ha, she said, do you work here? Ha, she said, do you know where they put the new tomb of Jesus? Ha, she said, come on, sir. Ha, I know it's early, ha, but you got to talk to me. You ain't saying nothing. Ha, Mary said, and all of a sudden, ha, she said, he called my name. Ha, he said, Mary, Mary, ha, the same one that said Samuel, Samuel, ha, the same one that said Moses, Moses, ha, Mary said when I heard him, ha, she said ha, in my mind, ha, I couldn't get out my head ha, what I saw on the cross, ha, he was mutilated on the cross, ha, Isaiah prophesied and said ha, when we saw him, ha, we hear as it were our faces from him. Ha. He was wounded for our transgressions. Ha. He was bruised for our iniquity. Ha. The Bible says a band of soldiers. Ha. The term band is a military term. Ha. It means up to 300. Ha. She said ha, a band of soldiers had beaten him. Ha. They grabbed his beard ha, and plucked his beard out. Ha. When Jesus hung on the cross, his face was swollen. Ha. With open hands, the Bible said they smacked him. Ha. The Bible said ha. they spit on him. Ha. Mary said, I couldn't get out of my head ha. what I saw on that cross. Ha. She said, so I didn't recognize him. Ha. I thought he worked for the cemetery. Ha. She said, but when he called my name. She said, I didn't recognize him by face, but I know that voice anywhere. Church. The Bible says, Jesus says, Mary, don't touch me. He said, I've got to ascend. He said, but go tell my disciples that I already planned this out. I told them I was going to be given into the hands of wicked men. I already told them that I would die and on the third day rise from the dead. I already told them to meet me where I told them. So go remind the guys to meet me where I told them. The Bible says Mary takes off running. She says, Jesus, Jesus said, meet him. The Bible says while they were in the room, Ushama, with the door locked, the Bible says Jesus walks through the door without unlocking the door. And the first thing he says is shalom, peace and safety, peace and prosperity, shalom, peace be unto you. He said, it's me, y'all. He said, I was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. The Bible says he looks on them and then he he 
he breathes on them and he tells them receive the Holy Ghost now some people will like to say that's when the disciples got the Holy Ghost no 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 Jesus said go to Jerusalem and stay there until you be endued with power church the Bible gives us understanding in Acts in John chapter number 7 the Bible says that Jesus had been teaching about the Holy Ghost but though he was teaching about the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost had not been given because Jesus had not been glorified church Jesus prayed a prayer and said father glorify thou me with the glory I had with you before the world was church oh don't you know that Jesus is the living word he's the manifested word of God but before he was the living word he was the expressed word church and God said let there be Jesus said all things were made by me and without me was not anything made that was made church so why does Jesus breathe on the disciples because when he said receive the Holy Ghost he was indicating to them it is now time to get the Holy Ghost the time is now because I've already been glorified I've already died on the cross I've already given up the ghost I've already risen from the dead the time is now my assignment this morning is to tell anybody that ain't born again the time is now anybody that don't have the Holy Ghost the time is now anybody that ain't ever spoken tongues the time is now now, anybody that ain't serving the Lord in sincerity and in truth, the time is now. What's your excuse? Why you ain't saved? Why you ain't living right? Why aren't you serving the Lord? You have no more excuse. The time is now. You call us crazy. But we already have a precedent. Noah built an ark. And he kept saying, it's going to rain. And the Bible says it had never rained on the earth. Noah was preaching something no one had ever seen. And he's building a boat on land. The size of three football fields. The Bible gives the measurements in cubits. When you convert it to feet, it's over three football fields long and three stories high. If you count each floor and lay them out side by side, it's almost ten football fields long. And Noah's building a boat. Put animals in the boat. And he keeps saying, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. The 
Bible says Noah found grace in the eyes of God about the space of 120 years, we infer from that text that it took 120 years to build this boat. And Noah keeps saying, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. Could you imagine the generations of people saying, we were saying that when my grandmama was alive. Could you imagine the people saying, I feel sorry for Sister Noah. She got to live with that crazy man up in that building with all them animals. And them Noah boys, they just don't know no better. They just following their daddy, just crazy. They crazy. I, ooh, ain't nowhere in the world I'd have let my daughter marry one of them Noah boys. Them Noah boys, crazy. And Noah just keeps saying, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. And then the Bible says the day comes that God tells Noah, get in the ark. And the Bible says God shut the door. God shut the door from the outside. And if you actually read the scripture, the Bible says God told Noah, come into the ark. So God was already inside. God says, come into the ark. God shuts the door. But if you read the scripture in Genesis, the Bible says they were in there for a whole week with no rain. Could you imagine all the skeptics? See, told y'all, them fools up in there, up in there. You know it stank, all them animals up in there. Girl, they only got one window. Child, they can't even get a cross breeze. They can't even open the door. You know it stank in there. They up in there. Girl, they been in there for the last four days. Talking about it's going to rain. The scripture says, but just like Noah said, when it start raining, now all of a sudden everybody want to be a believer. I'm amazed at how many people want to run to church when calamity happens. But you walked in your own strength when things were going good. The Bible says they start beating on the door. Because the water is rising. You think Helene was bad. You think this last hurricane was bad. The Bible says the waters rose so high till it covered every mountain. You think 15 feet of water is bad. Scripture says that boat start floating on the waters and it exceeded the mountains. People swimming to the door. Could you imagine? Noah! This your auntie. Noah! If you don't open this door, this your uncle. Noah! We are cousins. I know you ain't gonna let your family die out here. Noah said, God gave you 120 years. God locked the door. He the only one got the key. I can't even open it if I want to. All y'all think when the rapture happened, you're going to grab your mama's skirt. Mama going to have to save herself. You have been given enough time to hear the word of God and believe the word of God. You have been given enough time to say yes to the will of God. My assignment this morning is to tell you that the time is now. All y'all trying to get your life together, the time is now. All 
y'all that used to be saved and walked away from the church, you better get back in a hurry. You better be thankful he even given you a mind to come back. What am I? All y'all playing with your life? The United Negro College Fund says a mind is a terrible thing to waste. I'm telling you, you got one soul, and a soul is a terrible thing to waste. Don't you be like those in the flood who when they could have been saved because they heard the message, they didn't believe it. And now for years we've been saying Jesus is coming. We've been saying Jesus is coming. We've been saying the rapture, the catching away of the church will happen. And people say, y'all so crazy. Eh, ain't nobody flying through the air. Okay. Say that when we going up. Church, I pray you don't get caught in the aftermath of the rapture. I pray you ain't got to be here for the tribulation. I pray you don't make hell your home. I pray you get right with God today. I'm done preaching. The opportunity for you to get your life right is now. What good would a revival be if we didn't share how you can get your soul saved? We don't just come to church for good singing and clapping. We come to hear the word so we can get our lives right. Tonight, anybody not saved, it's time to get saved right now. Anybody not born again, it's time to get born again right now. You ain't got to wait till January 1 to turn over a new leaf. Today is the day of salvation. The Bible says that this world will get worse and worse. This world is on a downward spiral. And I don't care who you vote for. This world going to keep going down. Now I'm not telling you not to vote. 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 I already voted. I got my sticker. I voted. I already voted. Vote. You can't stop it from going down, but Lord, let it slow down. <laughs> this world is getting worse and worse. The day is getting darker and darker. The only escape is that you're hid, your life is hid with Christ in God. That's it. Jesus is the only way. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's what Jesus said. And I believe what he said. John wrote and said, our record is true. Our record is true. Somebody told me, how you believe the Bible? My response to him was, how do you believe your book? I said, matter of fact, my book was written before your book. My book was written before your book, but your book sounded like my book. If your book sounded like my book, but my book was written first, somebody plagiarized.
him he want to show me a sewer from the Quran. He said, this was written before the Quran. He said, well, I don't believe in a white Jesus. I said, have you seen Muhammad? your Bible. I said, I think in your, in, in your what we call verses, they call sewers. I believe it's somewhere in the third sewer. The third sewer says, no black man can be saved. Now they translate that to say it meant Nobody in sin, nobody in sin can be saved. I said, why you want black to be black in my book, but don't want black to be black in your book? I said, you quickly take my book and say, Solomon says I'm a black man. You quickly take my book and say that Jesus had hair like wool, skin like bronze, and you'll say that's a black man. But when your book say no black man can be saved, you say that ain't what that means. Thank you. My assignment to say to you, John says the record is true. Many people who are not Christians, they believe that Jesus was real. Some of them just simply believe he was a prophet. But he's more than just a prophet. He's the savior of the world. My assignment is to say to you, the time to get your life is now. Time to serve the Lord is now. Do me a favor. Everybody find somebody you believe can pray. Find them right now in your circle. Everybody get somebody you can pray with right now. Now don't everybody run to one person. Everybody get somebody to pray with. All right, now that's enough for this front circle. Mother ain't praying for everybody. Matter of fact, I'm going to challenge you. I take